Hey everybody, how's it going tonight? So in this tutorial, it's going to be a bit more theory uh, than I normally do in my videos. Um, I figured that this is something that I kind of had to go through if I was going to do a tutorial on metals, because I feel like one of the biggest problems that people actually have with uh, getting photorealistic metals in Lumion is that they don't totally understand the workflow uh, between specular and metalness. Now, the way that a, a texture is made is just dependent on the actual uh, 3D modeling software. Um, I believe that just about all of them can use specular, but some of them can't use um, metalness. Ultimately, they're going to get you to the same place, but Lumion is a little bit of a weird one because Lumion actually kind of uses both workflows, and I'm going to show you uh, kind of why that can be an issue, especially if you're going to um, maybe import uh, models from a place like Polygon or you're getting them from something like TurboSquid because most of the time um, you are probably going to find a specular workflow and Lumion can be a little bit weird about that. Uh, so I have uh, some examples here just to kind of show you how the different textures work. So with the metalness workflow, uh, typically the, col the main color is coming from a base color uh, or something that's kind of like an albedo. Uh, but typically, you're going to actually have the color of the metal inside of that map. Uh, and that's where the biggest difference is uh, between the metalness and specular workflows. Because as you can see here, the, uh, the specular workflow, uh, anything that is supposed to be a metal, uh, it basically gets blacked out. So you could have a, a color map, like in this example. This is the color map for a metalness workflow. Now, in here, you can see that whatever part this is, this is a metal part. Okay, so if you brought this into Lumion, then Lumion is going to show that as a gray texture. And then you just have to make it reflective and you have a metal. The problem is, is that if you have a specular workflow, then let's give this a second here. But basically, if you have a specular workflow, then that metal area is going to come in as black. So if you are importing something, and you can see that here, but if you're going to import something uh, and it has a specular workflow into Lumion, the best that you're going to be able to achieve is a like a shiny black material. And honestly, sometimes that kind of does work. Like I know that if you have, you know, like a metal oven, then you can kind of use like a workaround to get like a black version of it by using a specular uh, diffuse map. Now, the reason why it comes in as black is because in the specular workflow, uh, metals actually get their color from the uh, reflection map. So here, we can see that that same portion that is in the colorness for metals is actually in the, uh, the reflection map in the specular workflow. Um, and yeah, th this was the part when I was first uh, learning Lumion that I could not wrap my head around why basically all of these um, models if, if I bought like a just even like a like a silver spoon or something, it was just always black. And it was extremely frustrating because uh, I felt like I had all these great models that I couldn't use. And it actually turned me off from using Lumion for a little bit. Uh, but you can actually get around that. So um, I'm going to show you just one kind of quick way that you can fix it. This is you do have to have Photoshop and it's not, you know, this isn't perfect. If you have a really complex texture, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but if you just need a quick fix uh, and you are able to get the reflection map and the color map, what you can do is just drag your color map into Photoshop and then you drag the reflection map in as well. And so what I typically do is I'll just cut this here so that you only have this. And then uh, I will, I'll probably just copy this actually. So I'll cut this, go back to this workflow, and then put in a layer. And then you just might have to adjust this. And you just do something like that. So now, mind you, there's probably a better way to do that. But just a kind of a quick example of how you can do it. Because now we, we've converted the specular workflow, at least for the diffuse map, into the metalness workflow and the metalness, uh, like, as I said, Lumion needs the color map. It can't make, uh, it can't use the reflection map, uh, for its own colors. In fact, the most that the, it can really do is in the, in the metalness workflow, uh, you can, uh, put this mask uh, in the alpha channel of your color map or your, uh, yeah, your color map. 
and then only that area is going to be metallic. Uh, this is something that I'm going to get into a little bit more in a future video. This, as I said, this is probably more of a boring video, but it is very important that you understand the differences between these workflows if you want everything to work in Lumion. Uh, one of the other big issues uh, with these two workflows is that, uh, so you have a roughness map here. So I'm gonna drag that in for now. But you have a roughness map in one workflow. So in the metalness, it's basically asking you how rough something is. Whereas in the specular workflow, you have a gloss map, which is asking you how glossy something is. Now, they're more or less just the inverted versions of themselves. So if you have a gloss map and you need a roughness map, uh, or vice versa, as I'm about to show you here, then you can just bring the photo into Photoshop, hit Control I, and then more or less you have it. Like as you can see here, there are some slight color variations, but I don't think that's enough to really affect your final product. But just like that, you've turned the gloss map into the roughness map. Uh, it's very important that you have the gloss map for sure if you're gonna put that into the normal map uh, alpha channel for Lumion. Because it, you know, if you have if you actually have a roughness map, um, then it's just going to completely mess up uh, all of your texture. Something that's supposed to be extremely glossy uh, isn't going to be glossy at all. And then so you're going to be turning the dials up and stuff like that, and you're going to be really frustrated. Um, but I find with Lumion, for the most part, if you're actually able to uh, import the uh, textures correctly, you shouldn't really have to use the gloss and reflectivity too much because uh, Lumion will be able to get all of the information that it needs. Uh, the reason why, and this is the biggest reason, that I wanted to kind of break down this video and show everyone is because Lumi so Lumion uses color maps. Um, so, okay, that's the metalness workflow. But then it also uses the a gloss mask inside of your normal map most times, and that is in the specular workflow. So I'm not exactly sure why it's like that. It probably would have just been easier to have a roughness mask, but um, regardless, you actually have to be able to combine the two workflows and you need maps from both of them to make, uh, to get all five textures correct in Lumion. So uh, as I said, th th I'm probably gonna leave that here. This is a, a very, like it, it's a very boring topic, but if you're unsure, um, just about the two workflows, please uh, leave a comment and I'll try and explain it uh, in the best possible way that I can. The other recommendation that I would have is just to go online and just read uh, about diffuse maps, uh, gloss and roughness maps, that kind of thing, just so that you have uh, a better idea of, you know, just how all this works. Because then, you know, if you, if you hit kind of a snag with Lumion, you'll have a better understanding of just kind of how you're gonna get past that hurdle. And I didn't want to go too, too much into this and kind of spoil the last two videos since uh, I'm actually going to show you in those videos how to properly import uh, a polygon um, material so that you don't get that that black color. And, uh, you know, all your um, all the metals are going to look just like they do on the website. And then in my final video, I'm also going to show you how to bring in um, almost any kind of model from polygon. Uh, most people that are going to have an issue when they uh, download it from Polygon, since uh, when you go to kind of like the generic FBX, it comes with a color map because their their generic um, folder doesn't change depending on if you choose like, you know, whatever rendering engine that you want to use, you're always going to get that same fo um, folder and it always has uh, an FBX with a specular workflow. So I feel like what happens is most people say like, okay, I need an FBX for Lumion. So then they go, they, they open it up and then they just can't get it to work. And as I said, I've actually seen uh, quite a few renders where people are kind of going through their apartment or their, I guess they're seen. And then you, you see these polygon materials, but you know, it's like a sink or something and it's just a black color. And I'm like, okay, well, I, you know, I can sympathize, uh, sympathize with them because uh, I've done the same thing myself. So yeah, um, stay tuned for uh, part three and part four. Uh, I'll, it'll definitely be a lot heavier than this one. Uh, we won't just be sitting here talking about uh, the two workflows. I really hope that I could have helped you guys out today. Uh, if I did, you'd really help me out by uh, hitting the subscribe button and liking the video and uh, also just uh, telling me your comments below the video. Um, I will hopefully be releasing part three and four uh, in the next few days. 
hopefully before Friday, but we are kind of in the middle of a project, so I'm going to find the time when I can. Have a great night, guys, and uh, thanks for stopping by.